Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I introduce my Raptor engine model. So far I've been using the Raptor engines from the Real Engine pack, but everybody keeps asking me where I get the engines from, and also I use the Raptor engines quite a lot for various purposes. So I decided it'd be good to just make my own model of them. And uh, so here is the sea level one, and uh, this is the vacuum one. And the difference is, well, I have to leave a lot of features out because there's just a bundle of tubes going all over the place. I've tried to capture the essence of it, uh, but one big difference from the other models that I used to use, and so this is the sea level and this is the vacuum, is it captures a lot more of what's at the top here. Uh, though I did put a sort of central node here so that it can fit whatever location the old ones fit. So it uh, mount at that point instead. But you can see, if you ever see a photo of the Raptor engines, they have a whole lot more going on at the top. And these look a little bit squat by comparison. So I just wanted to capture more of that. And so these models do. And the, the nozzles are sort of this flatter color if you've seen images. We really only have one image of the Raptor vacuum with its nozzle, so I tried to imitate it as much as possible. But again, a lot of features have been left out because, first of all, you don't want that complex a mesh in the game. And second of all, it would take way too much effort. But I did try to get the essence of it. And so that's what we've got for the new Raptor engine models. And so what I'll do is I'll link a Mm, well, I'm gonna put these with my starship, so it's gonna be part of the Real Rockets pack. I think I'll just uh, link an updated version of the Real Rockets pack. I'll increment the the number on it, and so basically the only change between uh, the last version and this one will be the inclusion of the Raptor engines. So I've uh, put the Raptor engines on board. I've also changed Raptor 9 rocket uh, in some significant ways. The most important way is I separated off the interstage so that we didn't get that gap that occurred between the first stage and second stage. So there's a separate interstage part now instead, and that uh, probably solves probably solves the problem a little bit better. Uh, anyway, the, so here's the vacuum engine nestled in there, and. We have that like that, and otherwise it didn't change anything up here. I did remove the decoupler from the first stage. Grid fins, yeah, my fault. Uh, apparently the wrong way around. Uh, to be fair to the modder, if you zoomed in really close, it does say this end up. So the reason I put it the way I did is because of the way it's here. You see, they're like that, and when you pull them out, they're like that. So I just pulled it out of the part menu the way it is. And I didn't know whether the modder, it's not how Falcon 9 has it, it's a question of whether the modder oriented the control surface properly, right? I mean, it's uh, less important that to me that matches Falcon 9, because this isn't Falcon 9, and much more important to me that it works properly. <laughs> so I was figuring that maybe uh, it would work properly if I oriented the same way it seemed to be in the selection here. But, no, well, I mean, it says this side up, so I'm going to assume that this is how it's oriented, and hopefully it worked for the best. So, anyway, to test my new Raptor engines, I'm going to try and land this sucker one more time, and uh, we'll see. Oh, I forgot to mention some of the features of the Raptor engines, aside from the looks. Uh, so, I put configurations on the Raptor engines, and honestly, the thrust-wise and... Elon said this, and it looks like RPA Lights, my little program to figure out rocket stats, agrees that the thrust level uh, doesn't really change much with the addition of the nozzle, and that's because of the high chamber pressure. Most engines, if you add a really long nozzle, you get uh, some more thrust, but in the case of Raptor, it doesn't seem to do too much. It's mo mainly ISP. So uh, we've got three configurations on it. These are my custom configurations. Raptor 2020 is what uh, Elon said that uh, it could sustain right now, 210 tons of thrust. And then Max is what they tested it and had some uh, eventual failure with wear and tear. And that was 230 tons of thrust. 
but conceivably you could use that configuration and as long as you only use it on liftoff for like 30 seconds or something like that and then throttle down, you could probably get away with that, right? Once uh, the rocket gets lighter. And then the hype is, whether you want to call it the hyped or hypothetical, uh, that's 250 tons, which Elon also said in his tweet. So uh, made the calculations based on each of those, uh, a minimal increase in ISP as a result of the increase in chamber pressure because it's already so high that the marginal improvement is very low actually. Um, the, the nozzle just can't capture that much. I guess if you had an infinite nozzle or something, I don't know. But the vacuum engine um, I have at the, uh, it's 375 seconds ISP. I assume that that's what the current one would have. That's an assumption, okay? And then for the max and the hype, uh, I then assumed that they would get better nozzle efficiency down the road because they're aiming for 380, right? Or something more than that. So I increased nozzle efficiency in RPA light and got somewhat better ISP as a result of that, but that's uh, the main changes on those two. All right, so taking you outside, let's see how it works. Okay, so we're gonna try and land the first stage again, but this is just a test of the engines, and landing the first stage is just a bonus thing, mainly for explosions, so, uh, you know, for suspense, if you will. So, as long as the engines work, I'm happy. And off. So here we go with the new model engines, Raptor C levels, and hopefully uh, turning, I mean, because I have turned the Griffins around, they technically didn't cause a problem last time, so I'm a little bit worried that they are going to cause a problem this time because previously I had had uh, rolling problems with Starship when I tried to land it. So I don't know. We'll see. And shut down. Separation and ignition. Oh, the Griffins are sort of working already there. Okay, but we want to follow the first stage here. All right, RCS on. Well, let me see, uh, Griffins out. They they do things, okay, that's fine. RCS on and turning. Uh probably not that you know what? I'll just turn it manually just to make sure that we turn properly. One thing I don't understand is why is it not apparently using the methane up here? I know the configurations had it using methane, but it only the RCS seems to be only using liquid oxygen, I don't understand why. Hmm. I don't remember if that was the case last time. I didn't check. But it's clearly using liquid oxygen. I don't know why it's only using liquid oxygen, though. Seems weird. Okay, so we don't need all of those. Those will do. And shield landing predictions. Um, seems like we need to point a little bit northish. Depends on where exactly. Uh, Cape Canaveral, the area is a little bit big, so. Depends on where exactly we want to come down, I suppose. And let me just turn off those two for now so I get a finer control over things. I don't actually know what coordinate it has set for Cape Canaveral, per se. Oh, that's, that's going awry already, okay. Well, we're gonna be a bit off, I think. Yeah, I'm still looking at the... Here, uh, you can control it for now. Still trying to look at the configuration to figure out why it might be using only one of the two propellants that is listed under the thing. We've got both available. Got less of both than I thought we would, and that's a little bit of a problem. Maybe I've been using too much of it. So let's knock ourselves a little bit further south as we do the slow down burn. It's gonna end up in the water, I think. Okay, and ignition.
Well, I'm gonna need the rest for sure. And let's switch to the uh, one engine. Well... It's not gonna be great. We're gonna be in the water this time. Okay, let me try and start out here. Oh, okay. The suicide burn countdown is definitely wrong. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to work on I think it's because of the length of the thing and it's measuring from the zero point, which is in the middle of the tank, instead of the bottom of the tank. So probably should not believe the, the um, suicide burn countdown in MechJib in this case. Okay, anyway, but the, but the engines work, all right. So, yeah, going back to vehicle assembly. So again, the point is I'm giving you these two. Please be happy, don't hurt me, and uh, it'll be part of the Real Rockets pack from now on. So, yeah, uh, are they perfect? No, they, they would need a whole lot more piping to look anything like the real thing. They're just uh, sort of the key components as far as I could tell. So, yep, but then you'll get the results that I get as if you use the configurations on these. So. That'll help as far as consistency is concerned. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.